Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division for the TPC Sawgrass here for the players 9 hole cup here in Gold Clash the game. Super exciting times where we're gonna play TPC Sawgrass for the very first time and I've had a blast in practice and I'm super excited to dig into the tournament once it starts on Thursday the 9th of March. Before we take a closer look though, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. For those of you that are looking for guides in any shape or form, then you scan the QR code here on the screen or you go to patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. You can see all our packages there and you can find something that suits what you want to improve. Follow the info box on the right hand side to get the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also a ball and club type we suggest you to play with. Have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to, but there is always a plan behind it. So let's go to hole number one. On hole number one, I'm playing with a katana ball and my extra mile. Now, if you do have the possibility to play with a power five ball, you can get yourself into a situation where you can drive to green. That will also be possible with higher level clubs and playing with a power three or a power four ball. But here I'm trying to find a way to just make an easy layup for everyone to be able to follow. And, all, and also that if you do have a headwind, going for green is going to be a bit difficult to do. Max no elevation with the drive all the top spin which is four and a half bars and three right spin using some curl in the end as well to be centered into the fairway with a drive that is 335 yards. All right we're gonna take a look at the second shot. Second shot is a uh, Thorn. And here we are going to uh, check where max line is and also then check where minimum distance are to make sure that we make the best possible guess here. Now, we do not have a fully developed ball guideline with our Thorn 5, so we need to make sure that we are aiming not, I mean, we can't aim with the tip of the ball guideline into the hole, then we come in too hot. We can't be too far away, then we will come in short. So and obviously left to right as well. So it's a lot of guesswork here when it comes to the placement of our uh, target. Medium distance, or let's say like this, is true club distance, 15% elevation is what we are using. I'm not using any spin um, whatsoever. And the ball bounces on the fairway up onto the green, and we're dropping this one dead center for a lovely eagle to start with here in hole number one. Hole number two, and you would see and notice that the kind of the common thing for the par threes in this playthrough, uh, due to me not having um, any good long iron with a good ball guideline, is that we are going to have to guess the rollout every time. And that's difficult. You can see here that I'm adding three backspin, leaving the ball guideline short in line. Not really sure if I'm going to come in too hot or too slow, or I'm aiming a little bit too much left or right. And that's uh, obviously the difficult part when it comes to the lower level clubs that we're playing with. Now, back when 8 is not one of the lowest clubs, but I hope you understand my point. Um, aiming at the center of the fairway, we do have loads of room to the rough on the left and right, so we are never going to be in that, even if we hit bad grades. Close, but in the end, we don't, we don't really have a good ball guideline to follow, so sometimes we're going to be close, sometimes we're going to drop it, in the end, worst case scenario, a birdie. Max plus 15 was the adjustment that I was using. For hole number three, we are going to do our very best here to position ourselves at the end of the fairway. And that we can do with different uh, in different ways. We can use the quarterback, which is only a possible club, in my opinion, in tailwinds. Crosswind, headwind, then we're playing with an extra mile to make sure that we do have enough power on our club. Adjustment, max plus a 10. And then we are centering the ball to hit perfect. And again, we're looking to be as far up the fairway possible without rolling into the rough. And the reason it's important to be as far up here as possible is that we do want to be able to reach 
with our sniper on the approach because if we can't reach with the sniper meaning that we do not have the power enough with our sniper to reach then we're gonna be into the problem of that we're mainly just playing for a safe eagle and we do want to have a look at the albatross because in the end it's the tpc sawgrass we obviously want to have a look at every hole uh, to uh, to make sure that we give ourselves the best possible chance for a drop two right spin and some backspin leaving the ball guideline uh, short and pointing right and the reason i'm doing so is to make sure that the tailwind that i'm having combined with that we are adjusting from a lower to a higher point that that's not going to be an issue for us and not because it could otherwise push us left or let's say like this let's rephrase what i uh, weirdly said if you're aiming with the ball guideline to the hole and you are making an adjustment from a lower to a higher point, you will most certainly miss left. So my offset here builds in the fact that I'm adjusting from a lower to a higher elevation, and therefore I can, in this case, drop my shot dead center and still have enough speed to reach for the hole. So hole number three, not an easy one, but the Albatross is most definitely there. On hole number four, now we do have a headwind, which is a bummer because I would rather want to play with a quarterback or any other club that do have a little bit better accuracy than the extra mile. But as I do have a headwind and I am not in any interest or I do not have any interest of using overpower, I'm keeping the extra mile here using a little bit of left spin and three and a half bar top spin. Maximum distance with a 20% over adjustment. And once we have adjusted here, if we pull into overpower, we're going to have to use whatever overpower we adjust into, which is very minor. Then you may be wondering, why do you not switch to a P3 ball? Ah, I mean, it's because I don't want to use any of the P3 balls that I do have in my inventory. So I'm sticking with the P2 ball, making it a little bit more difficult for myself. But hopefully those of you that do have the possibility to play with a P3 ball in this type of scenario, maybe change to that. Now, second shot, we're going to play with our Thorn, and we're going to play this one uh, with, let's have a look, hold for this second shot, there. Alright, so we're going to play with our Thorn from more or less min distance, and which is a beautiful way of, of attacking this pin. I would say like this, after playing this hole uh, a bit more, after making this first recording, if you have the possibility to bounce on the fringe, use that one. I believe that that's going to give us a bit more consistent first bounce. You can see that the ball guidelines flickering uh, back and forth, meaning that we do have some glitch spots, there, glitch spots there, and it's going to be easy to miss and make the wrong call as the ball guideline is very deceiving. So here I'm deciding to go pretty high up to make sure that as a worst case scenario, I might come in pretty hot, but I will not go short. That's kind of how I'm thinking when it comes to these type of scenarios in general play also. It's better to come in too hot. So if you do have glitch spots to, to move your ball guideline a little bit higher up to either in that case, yeah, come in too hot or just be perfect speed. No elevation is what I'm using and it's true club distance as well. Take your game to the next level with our ultimate tournament text guides we are doing for expert and master division qualifying round guide and final round guide. And we are uploading as we go. So as soon as a guide for any hole is done, we're adding it to the guide portfolio where you can access. So as soon as you sign up for the nine hole cup package or any other package that do cover the nine hole cups, you will get access to the guides but also to our telegram support system where you can ask questions and learn and improve uh, from our short creators but also other um really good players that are involved in our community so sign up scan the qr code there on the screen you can use the link patreon.com slash golf clash tommy that is in the description down below Hole number five is an interesting par five. It's not that long, which makes it actually quite exciting, in my opinion. Three left spin, and, and I'm using, in the end, two and a half bar top spin. You can see that I'm putting my target at max and making sure that the ball guideline is centered down the fairway. Adjustment is going to be max plus 10. 
And once we have adjusted, we are going to uh, make sure that we are centering the ball properly and trying our best to hit. Perfect. Perfect ball it is. It bounces on the fairway. The roll down and you can see now that we are nowhere close to the rough on the left or the right. And from here, we are going to go for a rough bump. And you may think in here, why go for a rough bump when you have an open shot like that? But there is a reason for that, and you will see that yourself. And that's called a tree. You can see that tree there. If we're trying to bounce on the fairway, the difficult part here would be that we have to bounce on the very low, like the very beginning of the fairway before the green. Otherwise, we risk clipping the tree, and then you're going to be in the bunker or in the rough. So the rough bump here is actually perfect in that sense. You can see how wide and how big it is, right? So even if you do make some errors or you hit great balls, you will still clip the rough and you will still roll out for a birdie. I'm using all the right spin as the more left you are on the rough, the more consistent it is uh, to give us a better first bounce. No elevation, true club distance. And you can see as well that I left the ball guideline short of hole. And the reason I did that was due to the fact that I don't want to come in too hot. This is a perfect speed, dead center for the Albatross on hole number five. So the rough bump, in my opinion, is the way to go. A par three where having a good ball guideline is going to be extremely important. Uh, maybe not important, but useful is the right word. Because here, I'm obviously estimating to where the ball, how the ball is going to roll. And that's going to be cause of, yeah, we're going to miss a lot of shots by doing this. Because it's going to be very hard to be accurate and do this exact aim point every single time. Max plus 10 is what I'm uh, having as an adjustment. Now I'm zooming in a lot just to make sure that the trees are not an issue. And uh, once we have adjusted, we are going to uh, send to the ball and hit perfect. And I, I would say hope for the best because we don't really know if we're aiming exactly at the pin or not. Mauling ball is the only thing I'm wasting here. There's so much room in this fairway and the wind is still pretty small, um, which means that um, it's not really going to endanger getting into any rough or sound. A 360 out, that's unlucky. But this is going to be a tough one if you don't have a club such as Grizzly or any other long arm with a better ball guideline. For hole number seven, we are going to play with our quarterback here. And the reason I want to play with the quarterback is for its accuracy and also for its better ball guideline. Now, the key here is to not go too far. If you decide to lay up like I'm doing in headwind here, going too far means that you can see the tree that you do have on the, at the top there. That's going to cover your uh, ball guideline and it's then going to be just a way for you uh, forcing yourself to save the birdie and here with a short par 4 we will want at least have a look at the eagle with our short iron on the approach for those of you that do have a good club and also be having the possibility to play with a power 3 or better you can actually get yourself too green or close to green by being a bit more aggressive unfortunately i don't have that to show here in this playthrough i'm just explaining uh, what would be possible on the second shot, you see we're playing with our thorn, and we're going to play from Max Club here. And what I do recommend here is to use some right spin to try to avoid the more, not glitchy spots, but the least, we want to be in the most consistent spot in that far way possible, obviously. So using a little bit of right spin, um, and that would be the best instead of going the no spin like I'm doing here now. 5% elevation and it's true club distance here. Could have thought that maybe adding a little bit more would be good due to the straighter crosswind as that will, after the first bounce, it will bounce us more left. And bouncing on the far away up towards the pin, dead center, so we have the correct adjustment uh, on hole number 7.
For hole number 8, this will be the most difficult hole for all of you playing in Rookie Division. Sure, you can use a big boy club and a big boy ball, like a P5 ball, and just drive over the trees. But not everyone can do that. And the fact as well, when you do have lower level clubs, having being able to go with a lot of curl is not something that is possible either. So I'm trying to find a middle way here. I'm actually taking a shortcut in between the trees. This too allows to have a line for the albatross on the second shot and also allowing us to have a safe way for the eagle by taking then a little bit more aggressive drive. If I would be playing the drive on the right hand side, I will more or less always be covered by the trees, which means that you're going to have to be very innovative if you're going to save the, the eagle from there. And that's kind of what you are choosing between here. Either a bit more aggressive drive, but then the eagle is safe, secure, and you have a chance for the albatross. Or you make a super safe drive, but then you're going to have fight. You're going to have to fight like hell to save yourself to get the eagle where the albatross is not going to be there at all. The second shot is, in my opinion, also a bit finicky. Now we're playing with our long iron here as we do have some tailwind. I would, I would otherwise enjoy playing with my wood club as it has a better ball guideline. And for me, when it comes to approach shots in tournaments, playing with a good ball guideline is kind of key to be consistently making shots. 10% elevation uh, on the second shot is what I'm using. Um, and we're going to have to just guess the club distance in an accurate way. If we don't do that, then we're going to miss, which, again, it's not that easy. But as always, when it comes to playing with the clubs that do not have a fully developed ball guideline, it becomes a lot of guesswork, and that's difficult for everyone. doesn't matter if you are a new player or an experienced player, it's always going to be difficult to guess the correct all the time and here we're aiming maybe a little bit more too much left maybe adjusted too much we don't really know because we don't have the ball guideline to follow so the second shot is going to be around the hole absolutely i uh, am definitely the one uh, looking at taking the more aggressive drive to then have the eagle locked in and also have a shot for albatross instead of being the more conservative drive where the albatross is gone and also that is going to be a struggle to save eagle For hole number nine, we're going to play this one very similar to uh, what we did in the golden shot, which is that we're looking to have the yellow ring, and in this instance slightly overlapping the fringe with the, the white ring slightly off the bunker. And this obviously because the backbone has um, different accuracy than the golden shot club. Adding spins using four backspin and a little bit of right spin. And you can see that from when the ball hits the ground, it's going to be a massive first bounce. And that's what makes this par 3 very difficult because uh, it's going to be hard to counteract what happens after the first bounce. And then you can obviously go with a lot more backspin and land directly on green, but that's going to require a lot more backspin. So like a maxed out Saturn or low level Tsunami or some Grim Reaper or something like that. Oh, hitting the pin it is after adjustment max plus 10. Need a little bit more backspin, but here in the worst case scenario, I'm getting myself a birdie. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching this playthrough for Rookie Division. A full nine of the TPC Sawgrass in the Players' Nine Hole Cup here in Gold Clash the game. Super exciting times. If you're looking for guides for the Nine Hole Cup, you can subscribe at patreon.com slash goldclashtommy by scanning the QR code here on the screen, or you use the link in the description down below and you will get yourself to all of our packages, and we just don't have guides for the Nine Hole Cup. We have something for each and every one. Thank you so much everybody for watching once again and i wish you the best of luck in your golf clash game